Okay, we are back with our solder story. And now let's see what what happens inside the solder. So when you have when you are ready with your solder joint and then you are applying electricity through it so your electric signal, your audio signal is flowing through it, what happens inside? So I have some dice for you and and these uh, six-sided ones they represent them and as you see they show the number four which means which shows you that indicates the four available electrons in the outer electric shell oops this flipped to a six should be four right so they they can share these four electrons with their neighbors and i have other players here as well i have copper it has uh, one electron to share to play with and I have silver, these uh, silvery ones are silver, they have one electron to share. And I have uh, antimony, which has five electrons in the outer shell. So, and also in addition, let's roll in some uh, lead particles, which are like the biggest atoms of all. And they also have four electrons to share. So if you have a solder that has all of these uh, elements, all of these metals in it, then it would look something like this. Uh, and you see there are these tiny ones, the tiny dice. These represent the electrons. Uh, so if you have a wire, like you, uh, you, this is the end of a wire, and then we have magnified this place, this piece of the wire, and that's the other side of the wire, and then we have electric current flowing through them then what is going to happen? So what will happen is that the wire, let's say this is the negative polarity. So it means there's an electron coming from there. This is that electron that our circuit is feeding into uh, the solder. So there's our wire, let's say it was a silver wire and the last silver atom that's in connection with the solder that gives off an electron to the next atom of the solder which happens to be a silver atom. And in that case, this bumps off the electron of the silver because it, it, it doesn't have space for two electrons. And then that, at, that, that electron goes to the next neighboring uh, atom in the metal, in the solder, which happens to be a tin atom. And that will bounce off its uh, electron that goes to the next and that goes to the next and let's say this has an electron here bounces it here bounces it there and that bounces back to the to the to the wire so why, why i put this mess here and why am i showing this to you for one thing it's because when the when the particles bounce the electrons right from one to the other atom the electron flow go follows the path of least resistance so it will always go to the neighbor uh, which shows the least resistivity. So for example, if the, the, here, if the electron was passed to this tin atom, then it will pass it to the next neighboring silver atom. And then that will pass it to the next neighboring, what's that? If, uh, if there's a lead here, higher resistance than the tin, it will go to the tin atom. And then the closest will be another tin, and then that will pass it on to, to a silver atom, and then there's a copper, there's a lead, and then so on and so on. So I'm showing this because the difference between all of these solders and these solders is, is the composition inside uh, the solder. So most of them have 90% or more of tin, so these T6 things. And uh, those have a pretty high resistance, and they, uh, which means that when the electricity is flowing through them, they generate a lot of heat and cause voltage drop. So they take away from the signal. But when we add uh, some uh, lead, these are the big ones, lead to the tin, it makes it the, the, the solder flow even better and have an even lower melting temperature. And uh, uh, that, uh, in the meanwhile, I want it to go to 
show you here okay so when we go to the cardas website it it says that it has a leaded solder bar that has a tin and lead in it so when you only have these two of them you get this type of solder situation and they sell it for solder pots so it means that you can put these bars they look like this the solder bar you put it into the pot it melts it and you have a, a nice liquid solder and then you can put your wire in it and it will coat it with nice solder but then it the problem will be the good thing is that it will uh, flow really well the bad thing is that it will have a really high resistance because uh, tin is not resistive and lead is even worse so it's going to have an impact on the sound but as i said in the previous video if you have problem in your system with high frequencies and i would say about 995 solid state amplifier has major problems in in high frequency handling out of a thousand so it's virtually almost impossible to run into a solid state amp that doesn't have a problem so so almost everything benefits from this type of scenario to have at least a couple of the joints uh, treated in this case but if you have a really high quality amplifier uh, then uh, in that case if you use more and more of these really uh, low quality high resistivity solder you will just dull the sound a lot and that's why a lot some people have this experience that if they pop in a tube amplifier in their audio system they think it has a limited frequency range and that's not because the tube amp sucks that's because you have a ton of junk solder in your system that kills off the top end but you do not realize that because the solid state amp that you are using it's a uh, it has a response curve that it has let's, let's say this is the frequency and the, and the highs are just boosted up and most of that boosted highs is actually high frequency distortion and uh, and to mask that distortion we can use a solder that has a lot of uh, or that has lead content in it or it's predominantly tin and lead and that will cut down this sensitive range and and then we'll chop down a lot of the top end response so you will not hear that nasty harshness in the top end and now let's see let's go for uh, more complex situations so let's take the lead out of the situation and actually nowadays uh, in the industry it is forbidden to use lead so for some reason in audio we still have uh, let it solder uh, flowing but in the eu in europe it's strictly forbidden to use lead in electronics for some reason for some loophole us really doesn't care about health that much so we can use all the lead we want here and and i think uh, in europe too for some reason uh, in audio we we can get away using let it let it solder in a limited quantity but if you are buying mainstream equipment like a Yamaha amplifier, Sony or something like that, which is not audiophile, there is zero lead content in it. Or if you get a Sony TV or you get a toaster or cell phone, there is no lead in those appliances because it's, it's really harmful for the environment. So it's strictly forbidden. Um, anyway so most of the industry does that already only us audiophiles are allowed to have some limited access to let it solder but it's better if we don't because then we are forced to deal with audio equipment that is uh, that has a proper high frequency response so let's see now i'm taking away a few of these individuals here and i'm showing what this solder would do which is 96 percent tin and four percent silver so in that situation you have a lot of tin atoms and and a few silver atoms interspersed so when you have the current running through it means that uh, occasionally a silver uh, atom will get an electron and it will bounce 
8 to 2 or 3 thin atoms before it reaches another silver and then 2 or 3 thin atoms and another silver and so on and so on. Uh, when we go to this situation, that castor silver that has the silver and copper in it, then this situation is transferred so that occasionally there will be also a copper atom getting an electron. And, and why do they do this? Because here, this is 4% silver, this is 4% total silver and copper, so it's 4-4. It's four, four. But why do they add in a little bit of uh, copper instead of making it 4% silver? They do it because copper has a lower melting temperature than silver. So by having some copper in it, the melting temperature is lower than this solder and it will flow better. And also another thing is when in uh, electronics we are soldering things together, we are usually soldering together copper wires. And, and if you also have some copper in that area which connects your two copper wires, then there is not that big of a shift between uh, the electronegativity of your solder and the electronegativity of your conductors. So if you use it in, in audio gear with uh, predominantly copper wires in it, I can really recommend this solder that has half a percent copper plus silver. But you have to be careful because the, the silver content in the solders will uh, really increase the high frequency response of your uh, equipment. And uh, if you already have a problem with too much high frequency in the sound, then do not use silver bearing solder because then it will get out of hand. But if your problem is that you do not have enough top end in your system, then go for silver bearing solder. And these two will be your best bet, like caster solder and, and this multi-core solder. Audio Quest solder, it doesn't, it has also a little bit of lead in it. But they say it has more silver than lead. But the exact amount is not specified. But I suspect uh, that it probably has less than 4% silver because it flows much, much easier than these solders. Uh, and then this one gives tremendous bass. So if you have a problem with bass, use AudioQuest Silver because be, solder because it will boost your uh, bass response tremendously. Uh, and for when you're looking at the Cardas solder, it will really hide your high frequency response and it will add a certain uh, sweetness or certain aftertaste to the sound, which I do not like. But there are a lot of audiophiles who love that type of sound. So if you listened, if you heard Cardas cables and you love the Cardas sound, then use the Cardas solder because it will give your equipment that kind of sound. So even if you make your own interconnects or use some different interconnects and you use the Cardas solder in your amplifier inside the joints or CD player, DAC, whatever, you will get that typical Cardas sound. So what's the situation with Audionaut solder? So Audionaut has uh, much more silver than the other solders. It has a uniquely high 6% sol uh, silver content, which is the highest of all. The next second highest is 4%. And plus it also has 2% of copper. So it means that it has a total of 8% uh, precious audio metal content inside the solder. So that means that when you have the electrons bouncing around, because of the three-dimensional structure, the predominant atoms in, uh, in the solder that conduct the electricity will be the, the silver and the copper. So basically how it works out in 3D is that 50% uh, of the electrons will come from these two types of atoms and, uh, and the rest of the 50 will be predominantly thin and it also has antimony in it. But the ant antimony will be the one that conducts the least because it has the highest resistance. 
so so whenever an electron wants to jump from let's say this silver and it's thinking where to jump it will rather jump to a tin than to the antimony because the tin has the twice lower resistance than antimony and as we all know current flows to the path of the least resistance so basically with audio node solder uh, you get 50% silver copper sound and 50% uh, tin antimony sound and when you look for any other solder the best you can get is about probably 15% uh, uh, silver or copper sound and about 85% tin antimony or lead sound or actually eventually I have to take that back tin and lead sound because uh, Audionaut is the only one that uses antimony in their solders. All the others just use tin and lead. So Audionaut uses antimony. Why do they do antimony? Uh, as you see it has twice the resistance of uh, tin which makes it in the ballpark of uh, lead. But instead of lead they use antimony because antimony has a uh, better sonic characteristics than lead. Eventually when you look at the meta uh, for for a long time they thought that antimony is thin. So so the in the metallic form the two of these look almost exactly the same and have extremely close uh, metallic properties when you are working with them as a metallurgist. Uh, at least <laughs> by 16th century standards um, uh, but uh, so so it's really close to tin much closer than lead and the good thing it that it has much higher electronegativity than lead so it means that uh, that it has a, a propensity to to uh, to attract electron better than lead does and it has a much better, much more beneficial influence to the sonic characteristic of the wire than or, or the solder than uh, than lead does. So what's the difference between lead and antimony? So based on my experience, because I used about like probably thirty or more different solder types in audio, so the lead sound it it dulls the sound. It gives a sweet taste to the sound and it takes out the high frequencies and it also gives a, a veil to the sound so it, it takes away a lot from your transparency and the only occasion I heard antimony is in the audio note solder and here it uh, it changes the sound okay so what do I base my comparison on I compare these two because this is almost exactly like the audio note solder so it also has tin, silver and copper, but the audio note has in addition antimony as well. Plus it has a higher ratio of silver and higher ratio of copper than this. So the, the, the sound characteristic between these two is that audio note has a, a, a fuller mid-range than this has. So, so because of the increased silver content, you expect a, a massive increase in uh, high frequency uh, signal carrying cap capability. But I did not experience that. So with this solder, actually your top end is more emphasized than with audio not solder. But uh, I have to add that it's, it's not in a good fashion. So when I use this solder, it feels that your highs are super duper extended. It's like you, you have a super tweeter running in your system. And when I transferred over to this solder, uh, and I actually I just changed the couple joints in my power amp, like le 10 solder joints total in the signal path and in the uh, power input, then that was already enough to make a massive difference in the sound characteristic so that a lot of that uh, high frequency distortion that previously masqueraded with this order as high frequency extension was gone 
and and the mid range gained a lot of definition, a lot of presence, and separated much more from the speakers. So I had the effect as if I had uh, quite a bit improved my speakers, and I didn't touch the crossover, didn't do anything to the speakers, just upgraded, changed a few solder joints from there to here. So so the antimony's sonic impact is uh, preventing uh, high frequency oscillations and bringing down the sound uh, to to carry a lot of energy in the mid-range and and that's something really critical because i haven't run across any solder that uh, that can carry uh, enough mid-range energy compared to low end or high end so all of the solder types either emphasize low frequency like audio class does or they emphasize high frequency as Cardas does, uh, this solder does, or they just dull the high frequencies such as uh, many of the uh, mainstream solder do. All of them that, that have lead in it, they, they, they really dull the high extension but the mid-range is really left to no man's land with all of them and audio note solder is the only one that that, that really flashes out mid-range and, and you have a feeling as if you are going from digital to analog so that much more uh, live, liveness is reached in the mid-range so that much more clarity is gained so um, I hope this uh, comparison helps everyone to choose the sorter that works for you the best. And I have a, a fantastic surprise is that the antimony in the audio note sorter does bring down the matting temperature a lot. So if you would put uh, that 6% of uh, silver and 2% uh, copper in your tin, uh, and your solder and do not add the lead in it nor antimony then the melting temperature would be outrageously high and probably I would need to crank my solder station to the max to 900 uh, degrees Fahrenheit which is 480 degrees Celsius and probably that would not melt it so even that wouldn't be enough by adding antimony to the mix uh, audio note has brought down the melting point a lot so actually even though this has tremendously high silver plus copper content double as any other solder in the market but still it has a much lower melting temperature than these two silver bearing solders so the melting temp according to their website is 380 degrees celsius so that's that's less than 400 degrees which is just super awesome for a high silver bearing solder and it's really really easy to work with so I, i'm telling people because i i run into across a lot of people even like well seasoned audiophiles who are used to rosencore and and stuff like uh, cardas eutectic solder or the wbt solder which flow at a super duper low temperature and they try to go for a, a, a pure silver solder without any lead in it and, and they, they fail utterly and give up and they cannot make a single working joint and my response to that is that if that's the case you are not doing proper soldering technique and uh, you just need to learn the proper technique which is tie the two metal surfaces together put your iron on on the on the metal of course do not do it on a sheet of paper because you will just burn your house down uh, but uh, i do not have enough arms maybe maybe let me see if i can see that tool you can get tools like this and then then you can use these fake hands grab your wire you can use another fake arm to grab another wire hook the two together uh, use a little tool to crimp them together and then uh, heat it up with your iron 
and then when it's hot enough your iron still there start drawing the solder onto it so it melts wait a few seconds and then take away the iron and let it cool down if it's not just two wires but you have a, a capacitor there like a sen or a transistor or some sensitive uh, piece of equipment then uh, have a little bit of uh, alcohol already like 91 percent isopropanol that's what i keep in this little jar and uh, and just have a q-tip ready and dunk the q-tip in your propanol and then put it on your solder joint to cool it down and when it cools down uh, your then uh, the heat will be transferred to your q-tip and the alcohol will evaporate instead of your sensitive transistor dying so in these 20 years that i'm working at this hot 460 degrees celsius 840 degrees fahrenheit temperature i never had a single diode or transistor die on me because of overheating or, or a capacitor so just use this technique and also another good thing is that using a q-tip i have a q-tip in my drawer here so just dunk it in the alcohol and then just put it there and then use it to clean the solder joint because uh, there will be flux on the surface and you want to remove that and while the joint is still hot it's reasonably easy to remove it but once it cools down you will have a really hard job trying to get it and if you leave it on after a while so actually the flux does have some uh, often some carbon residues in it and uh, while uh, when when your equipment is conducting uh, electricity it will slightly carbonize on the surface so when you look at an older uh, amplifier you will see some black spots on some of these solder joints and that's uh, carbon deposits and that will uh, cause low frequency uh, noise, noises and hiss and uh, background stuff in it. So, so just uh, as an amplifier maintenance, just dunk it and just clean those joints. Of course, it's much harder to do that when you have an order amp or, or an amp that's already pre-made. If you do the joint right away, clean it up and then uh, you don't have to worry about that thing. So if you use this method, you will have absolutely zero issue working with even the hottest melting temperature solder and you will not destroy zero components. So, and as I said, this audio note solder flows really, really easily, even though it looks almost like a piece of silver. So it bends as little as a silver wire does while when you look at this 4% uh, silver solder even though i have 16 strands stranded together it 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 bends really really easily so that's it for today and uh, have fun good luck bye bye